is retreats, timeless just retreat. Okay. And the idea for that is you're really having no sense of time around you. So you're completely in this different, yeah, exactly, different, <laughs> different illusion. <laughs> now I understand some of you might have commitments outside that are probably personal or family and that's okay, but please do that in breaks. But I don't want you to keep looking at time or asking anyone, hey, what's the time? Yeah. It's not a secret, all right? You're not going to get punished or anything for saying it's about, you know, whatever time. But the thing is, it's just, as, as you're aware, you've been to Monroe Institute, that's what inspired me as well, is that they, t they don't have any clocks up. I've taken all the clocks down. If there's any clocks in your room, please don't be sneaky, just please put it away out of the way, all right? If you're wearing a watch, please take it off. I will look after you this whole weekend, all right? Please trust us that we'll, we'll wake you up, we'll tell you when to go to sleep, we'll tell you when food's ready. Your body clock will be in sync anyway, most likely. Um, none of you have come abroad, so it's, uh, you've all been in England anyway, so your body clock is already here, your circadian rhythm is already here. Um, but timelessness is important, because when you step out of time and reality, this is why when you're here at the retreat, sometimes you find that you have time shifts, you know. You're here for a week, it sometimes feel like three weeks. It can sometimes feel shorter. And when you're in your sessions, which are cool, you know, when you're in your bed with the headphones and stuff, you you have all sorts of different things go on. Time distortion, body distortion, nothing scary. It's just, for example, you might be laying on your back and you might find feel like you're laying on your side or, or anything, and this is when you're being separated from your consciousness or your body, okay? All perfectly safe and everything. It's just be aware of this different phenomena that's taking place. So, <clears throat> as I said, like, you know, this is our family home as well. So please, you know, respect the space, keep it tidy. Uh, thank you for those who washed up, we appreciate it. Um, it just helps things go faster here as well. This room here is known as the checkpoint room, okay? May not always be here, if I, unless I say otherwise, but mainly it's always in this room where we share, we talk about experiences, a bit of information. So at the end of this session, don't go for a walk in the, in the garden and, and sort of be timelessness and, uh, oh, okay. Come straight here if you can, all right? Um, toilets, there is a toilet located here, um, but try and use the one in your room if you can, all right? and um, just keeps things more flowed and, and organized. And importantly, just before sessions as well. So a lot of sessions are spent in your, in your bed, basically, unless we're in the room here behind me with the gongs and everything. Um, try and go to the toilet before you go into session, even if you feel like you don't need to go, because the worst thing is when you've done the whole process and um, you've done the certain affirmations and, and other things, and suddenly you relax and suddenly you're like, Ah, oh, need to go to the toilet. Now, it's not a problem. You can go and come. You're not going to disturb your session. But the thing is, you want to get into your practice where you're not having any distraction at all. And this is the important thing. All the th small things that no one ever talks to you about in meditation, all these little niggy bits that happen, these are the things that can sometimes take place. When you're in meditation, your session, you try not to move your body uh, because of coming beyond your body and then suddenly the toilet situation kicks in, you know. In a lot of meditation, things I've heard the, over the years when they're saying, pick a nice comfortable place, you know, no distractions, but they never talk about going to the toilet, it's a big distraction. So we need to go get that done out of the way. Um, another thing is doors, like we have a lot of uh, fire doors here that shut automatically um, on a hinge. This is one that's got a weight down by the door, but all the other doors uh, throughout should have, they just close on their own. So just be aware of sound, time, uh, and space with other people that you're sharing with. If you're sharing a room on your own, it's a bit different, but especially if you're sharing in a room with somebody, that just be aware of not disturbing them in the process as well, okay? And then when you come through, just be aware that this door coming into the kitchen and this one, don't just open and then let it be. It's going to slam really, really loud, and it might just, you know, startle, etc. Um, okay, so what's in your room already? You have a bit of a welcome pack there, <coughs> a few chocolates and things, and towel. And separately um, is you have this by your bed. As a, as a V cushion, you might think you've probably seen one of these before, but these are my favorite. These are great because you can manipulate in any way. What I like to do is prop myself up in, in, in session and in bed or something, and you have a bit of head support. And the reason for this is that when you connect yourself with your headphones in your bed, 
you don't want to be completely laid down horizontally. It's a bit like those dolls that children have and you put them horizontally on their, their eyes shut, you know. <coughs> You're going to most likely fall asleep, which is what you want to do. You want your body to fall asleep, but you want your mind to be like completely awake. So, I want to do that is get comfortable. If you need any extra pillows or something, um, I find putting something under your, under your knees and then raising your back a little bit and then just uh, elevating your torso. Um, so you're in a like a reclined position, okay? Be completely uh, comfortable the whole time. I suggest being on your back uh, through, through the sessions so you're not gonna fall asleep, but you're gonna get deep meditation. If you have any uh, uncomfortableness in your body that you find out being on your back or certain position is really difficult for you, please just get in a position that suits you best. Um, in there also is a pack of uh, small earbuds, earphones, okay, in case you need them for the nighttime sessions. But have you all got headphones like this? Yeah. Yeah? Or wired? Headphones, but when I was coming in, my axilla cable is like broken, it's not transparent. It's not a problem, we have spares, just for this example, I right, have enough for, you know, maybe 10 people, but we have, we have some, so at the end, just let me know. I don't know the digs, I hope they, even if it's just the port, you know, but I don't know if it'll fit. So I did buy a cheap pair, a cheap one, Yeah. And, um, they don't fit in my headphones. Okay. Um, basically the wire, so I don't have it on this one, but the wire either plugs in that you have, or if, it, if you brought wireless Bluetooth ones, <laughs> they're not going to be no good. Someone did that on, on another retreat, and they said, oh, how do I connect to the Bluetooth? I mean, the technology that we put in, in all the rooms, it's, you know, it's like t over 10 years old, you know, we didn't have Bluetooth headphones then. And, um, and wired works better because it's just direct. So make sure you've got the, the right way around, make sure you've got the left on the left, right on right. You should say, say on your headphones. Usually what you find is that the cable is always on the left. That's always a, a good indicator, okay? And so, don't put them on straight away, just have them around your, your neck and then plug them in and the port uh, looks like this next to your bed, okay? Uh, so headphones go here down the bottom left in case you don't know. Um, the volume is here. Before you plug your headphones in and have your head just make sure it's down a little bit otherwise if the audio is on you're going to get a bit of a blast with some, some noise. Um, have it, the volume comfortably that you can Hear, hear my voice uh, speaking or the music comfortably, not blasting out loud, you know, you're not having a party, you know, <laughs> in your head at the time. Um, the black dial is important. It's uh, got eight channels on here and I've separated two lots of like um, uh, audio devices in two. So what I find is f from basically one, channels one to four, so one, two, three, four is the first round. So basically when I say go to your room, go to the toilet, get into session, start on this one, okay? If you don't know what I'm talking about, just keep it at three, number three. That's better, that's more in the middle of those. If you're in the toilet or your roommate is in the toilet or something's left behind and you got in session, you can hear the session halfway through and you're like, oh God, I'm gonna miss it. It's okay. Just change over to seven or channels between um, five and eight basically, or just remember to keep it at seven the second round. You have an extra five minutes, okay? So if you miss anything, you're not gonna miss it. You have an extra five minutes to catch up, all right? Doesn't mean you can be doing other things like being on your phone or you know just going for a walk. Try and be in session. And if you're waiting around, don't just wait for the order to come on. Uh, continue with the, the practices that I, I give you throughout the weekend. Okay, it's all makes it simple to everybody. Yeah, clear. Any questions so far? If I'm going too fast or no one understands, please say, all right? So that's by, that's not like this by your bed, obviously it's in the wall. Okay, this is just to show you. Um, so the tools that I provide uh, at the retreat is also eye masks. So you can pass this around. This is by a company called Mindfold. This is quite an old one. It doesn't usually look so wrinkled. Um, you can try it on, it's, it has been washed and um, basically um, it's got eye cut out holes. So these are really good brand, Mindfold. Got some foam with some uh, plastic and basically it like wraps around your, your face. If you put this on now, you can try. Um, if you put it on, you won't see anything at all. You won't see any, any light at all. Oh, you got one? <coughs> oh, good. Because I, had it, I have an eye, you know, like dry eye. Yeah. Normal ones rub my eye and I wanted something that were like that. Yeah. 
and well for that reason I didn't realise but the eye, eye cut out holes completely like and the fact it's plastic wraps around your face so when you put it on you don't see anything any light which is you very important say we needed to bring eye masks yeah yeah, yeah. so I went on Amazon and spent a tenner on an eye mask good, it's good. very good actually yeah. if I'd known yeah. you'd had these it would have been well these ones that are <clears throat> well, those the ones that you're in your room are the the very basic ones, just in case you didn't have any. This is backup, like um, yeah, headphones. Yeah, yeah, very good. So, yeah, the ones that are in your rooms currently, I, I wash and I I give to people regardless because um, they're they're to stay here, so don't take them home. Um, but that's just in case people forgot to didn't have them, you know, a number of different stories. There are other brands about, like this one I found that someone made, but still my favorite is the Mindfold. Now, um, sorry, it's gonna turn the music off. So reason for eye masks is uh, very important. Um, you're doing a lot of phenomena throughout these sessions. And what, what I'm saying is that when you put the eye mask on, you probably find that you'll see through the eye mask at some point. You have phenomena where you get completely relaxed. It might be completely dark in your room at night and suddenly you can see the whole room. Does, does this have happened to any of you already? Yeah. So this phenomena is, is not your physical eyes. Your eyes haven't popped out through the eye mask or something. It's literally your clairvoyance that you're seeing like remote viewing or, and things. It happens to me quite often. And, um, it, it, it's, I, I start to know what it is, but still, after years of training, it's still getting your head around, like remembering, okay, I'm seeing through my eye mask. When I'm traveling, I use eye mask quite a lot because they're not usually, I'm very light sensitive. So, especially at sleep and things, if I'm in a room and there's a tiny LED light on, it's not the fact that it's electronic, it's, it's the light, that I can see the light when I sleep because my eyes are shut, but my, my non-physical vision is seeing that and it's like, it's disturbing me. So I find being in complete darkness really, really helps. I'm lucky here in the country, uh, you know, our retreat that I've got spaces where when I go to sleep, it's just, there's no light at all apart from its moonlight. <coughs> so eye masks are very important. So you use them the whole sessions. It will get you deeper in your session, not for you to fall asleep, but to give you more phenomena and everything. Um, so yeah, use the cushions. There should be two pillows on your bed as well as this. Um, put one of the pillows underneath your knees, be comfortable. And uh, yeah, those are mainly the tools. Um, dress wise, um, if you've, as I said in previous emails and things, try and bring things that are comfortable. Um, at the moment you'll dress casually, etc. But I find that at the like, second or third day, people end up just being in their pajamas or onesies or anything comfortable. Onesies, being a onesie would be yeah. nice to see. <laughs> so um, be comfortable, okay? You're, you're here for this, you know, some experiences. And really, if you feel comfortable just being in your pajamas, it's, it's all right, do you know what I mean? Um, just be comfortable. And the reason for that, if you're wearing like jeans, for example, or something that's not, you know, it's comfortable, you're gonna, find that it's a bit you know disturbing for you and again it's all these tiny little things that can be quite disturbing for your, your session to distract you from from other things so um, the sessions are all very much the same um, it's basically basically guiding you through um, breathing processes um, and other other tools so <coughs> the track starts off with a bit of an intro music so the intro music will be exactly the same the whole time. So when you put the headphones on, you know, okay, this is the start of the track, okay, or, you know, or the end. But usually it's the beginning if I've told you to, to get into session. Um, the start of it, just me introducing um, Get Comfortable, which you're probably doing. Um, and then I get you to release any thoughts or worries or concerns. So right now, some of you might be thinking of things at home. You're not properly grounded here, maybe. Hopefully you are, but this happens to our mind all the time. You know, we're often, often thinking about things or work or whatever, but you're here this weekend to try and, you know, be here. So try and keep your thoughts here if you can. If your mind wanders, that's okay, but try and be present and be in this space. Um, there's gonna be thoughts and, you know, information, intuition that's gonna come to you at times to time. 
This is when like a, a notepad or something comes in handy. You all should all have a notepad either you brought with you or if you don't have one, there's a backup which are in, in your room with a pen. If your pen doesn't work, please let me know. And the reason for this, try and keep it with you the whole time. Try and swap it with your mobile, basically. If you're used to attach to your mobile, try and have a holiday without your mobile. I know it's probably hard. We've become so accustomed to relying on, you know, our best friend that's with us. We see the first thing we see in the morning and the last thing we see at night, we turn it off, hopefully. But this weekend, unless you need to access it, try your best to not go on it, okay? In the Monroe Institute, um, I'm not sure what happened when you were there, but they went with a box, yeah. yeah? To put your watches and stuff in. And now I'm sure they do it with like smartphones and things. And they say you can get it back at the end of the, end of the weekend if you find that you're, you know, you cannot deal without it. You can give it to me if you like. I won't turn it on or whatever. I'll just, you know, keep it out of the way. If you feel like you cannot live without it and you want some control, and you know, I can help, all right? I can just keep it in the office out of the way. I find it's not so much the phone. It's yeah. The lack of the phone leaves you with boredom time. And we're not used to being bored anymore. Mm. Are we? How much time do you spend sat staring out the window like I spent most of my childhood doing in the classroom? Don't do that anymore, do you? And it's true that so much has changed since technology's come along, smartphones and... You're just constantly entertaining yourself, phone, <laughs> games or whatever. So it's not the phone per se, it's because I don't sit there and go... <laughs> I've just phoned my husband and told him that's it, now I won't be phoning him again until I'm on the way up. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it, as our young generation, I think we were saying earlier about children, you know, growing up into more spirituality, you know, children are growing up into this technology, you know, and they're, they're not even knowing because they've experienced what we experienced probably when we were younger, that we didn't have this technology about when we were younger. And, uh, like you say, you know, just fantasizing out a video. Most of the biggest ideas in the world come probably from people being bored and daydreaming. Yeah, true. So if you don't allow boredom time and daydreaming time, I've heard uh, when they're like making certain movies or like Simpsons, etc. They said that they just sit around a table and they just stare for a few hours about a plan, and they're just thinking and they're like, oh, okay, let's do this. You know, they don't, they're not looking online or anything. They're just they're creative people, and you are creative people, and you're intuitive people as well. Um, so yeah, try and swap your tablet, your phone, wherever you have that you usually have. If you've got that control, great. But what I'm aware of the last sort of, especially five, five or six years, there's been a big increase where people are so glued to their device and they can't get away from it. If you see me on mine, it's not, I'm not on Facebook or whatever. I'm probably looking at notes I've written down or I'm looking at time because I would love to be timelessness with you guys, but fortunately, you know, we have to be aware of food and everything, so um, I have to be aware of that in order to keep this um, stabilised. But usually, the sessions I keep intuitive, I go with the flow, and I don't really plan anything. It's sort of similar the whole time. So the audio sessions, they start with, um, they start with me introducing, uh, putting your attentions aside, getting rid of thoughts, and uh, you put things in like a box, for example, your, your thoughts and worries, you put them into a box and you can imagine a lever the side of it. It could be anything. It could be, it doesn't have to be a box. It could be a washing machine you put. It could be past experiences. It could be things that are on your mind. It could be people, <laughs> you know, just cleaning away from your, from your conscious and your subconscious. And now I, I've added a lever on the side of the box that you can clean away, like empty it. So. You can come back to that box when you need it in your meditations. You can bring the box back into your conscious awareness and open it up and deal with it. But right now you've come to this place to have an experience, to work on like yourself, whatever reason you've come here for. Um, you know, personally, um, emotionally, physically, um, but also energetically with the, the phenomena beyond the body, lucid dreaming, anything like that. Um, on the track, I guide you the whole way. There's, it's very important that um, the breath work is very important. So you can try this now with me. Um, something I got intuitively guided when I was younger, uh, an out-of-body experience I, show, I shared with you all earlier, my first one, when I gained a lot of energy. So just keep your back straight and just, just relax. So sometimes when maybe you're breathing, breath tells us a lot about life and emotions. You know, when you're stressed out, how do you breathe? You know, 
you know, you're stressed out like this, okay? Maybe you've gone for a, a run or a walk and you know, breathing the same because your body is in stress almost from, from working, from physically working. When you relax, it's a lot more, a bit more gentle, okay? So with the breath work, you're, it's a bit the opposite. You're, when you use the breath, you're also breathing in a lot of energy into your body. Chi, prana, life force, or the force if you're a Star Wars fan. You know, whatever it is, wherever you see energy, if you work with Tai Chi or anything like that, there's energy all around us. So attached with the energy is also oxygen, you know, everything that you breathe into yourself. So the breath work that I've guided you on the track, it's, 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 it can seem like a long duration, maybe like five minutes or so, for example. In the middle of that, I remind you to continue breathing, and I do tell you when you can stop and relax, okay? But if it seems like a long time, continue. If you feel any tightness in your body, that you're breathing too much, or you're like, oh, I'm getting a bit of pain, that shouldn't happen. But for example, if it does, relax the breathing, you know, move about if you need to, and then go back into it. That shouldn't happen. But if it does, just wear of, you know, your own breath work. So the breath work is on, on the audio. It's guiding you to, to breathe in. And breathe out. Now, when you breathe in, you want to imagine energy coming from the bottom of your feet, passing through your body, and then going to the top of your head. And then on that breath, back down your body. Now, on the out breath, you want to, you want to breathe through partially closed lips, like, like that. You want to imagine that there's a ca candle in front of you, and you're trying to blow it out. Okay, and if you're breathing all together at the same time, if you're sharing a room with somebody, don't feel that you're embarrassed about breathing because they're probably doing the exact same thing anyway. So the key, the magic bullet really is the breath work because it brings in a lot of energy into your practice. It builds up a lot of energy into your body. Most likely you'll feel parathesia, which is uh, energetic movements under the skin, the meridians. You'll feel it in your face, your hands. You might feel like your body is vibrating. This is really good. <laughs> Okay, it's not anything that's going on where you're hyperventilating. It's the fact that you're breathing, you're bringing a lot of energy into your body. So the breath work is if you're doing the breath like, <sighs> don't do that. Okay, that's not good. You want to be doing long, slow, deep breaths. And um, this is your part where you put a lot of work into the session. The rest of it, you use your mind and you relax and just concentrate where you want to go. Okay. So the breath work, follow me as I guide you. So you're breathing in, and then out. So you're using your full breath, full deep breaths. When you're breathing in, breathing from the stomach, the, di the di diaphragm, and then in through the chest, and then out through the mouth. So breathing in through your nose. So it's like that, okay? Relax with it. I'm not gonna punish you doing it wrong, all right? Just be aware of the energy building up inside of you and use your intent. The intent is very, very important throughout the whole, all, all your sessions. If you're laying there in your session and you go, oh, I'm gonna get, yeah, I'm gonna have an experience. You're not gonna have much of an experience. You wanna use your whole energy, energy body, your emotional body, where you're like, yeah, I'm gonna have an experience. Whatever it is. But the most important thing is have no expectation about having experience at all. But it's just having the excitement and the enthusiasm of like, okay, I'm doing this right now, I'm doing this session, and I'm just gonna see what happens, okay? If you come here for the intention, like, okay, I'm doing this breath work, great. Now I'm gonna go have that body and, and sweep my friend. And most likely that won't happen, you know, because you're too much in the mind. You wanna get away from the mind and, and be timelessness, weightlessness, and everything. At the moment, this may be alien to you. That might be not familiar to you at the moment. The next couple of sessions that we do, you'll start to familiarize yourself with the processes involved, the sessions, okay? So the sessions, as I call it, is, you know, you're in, in your bed, you're laying, you know, either on top or inside, getting comfortable, headphones on, propping yourself up if you need to. If you find that laying on the bed is comfortable, more comfortable, then do so. Um, any questions so far? No. You're wearing the mask. Mm. Keep your eyes open or shut? Oh yeah, keep your eyes shut. Yeah. Okay. It's not to keep your eyes open, but it's to block out light. 
because even now if you close your eyes you'll still see light and even if you wave your hand over you especially me because I've got the light coming from here you'll see you'll see stuff other things that can happen with the eye mask is not that you'll see through it but what happens with uh, spirit you know spirits that are around you know guides non-physical friends that are here you know supporting you especially if you're new to like you understand about trance work as well that even if you've got your eyes closed, you'll see energy. And I see that too. I see a lot of like purple, I see whites, I see pink, sometimes reds, sometimes greens. And it can be so bright. It's as bright as someone having a really high powered torch and, and shining it into your eyes. It's that strong. So when you know you've got the eye mask on and then you're seeing lights, you're like, oh, okay, I know this isn't, this is something energetically. So it's another reason why wearing the eye mask is important to block out that. Um, yeah, keep it on all times. Yeah, keep your eyes shut because if you got your eyes open, you're more like you can you program yourself since you're at birth to be awake. You know, the idea is keeping your body completely asleep. This is what um, Focus Ten is in the Monroe Institute. Hemisync is mind awake, body asleep. So you're trying to do that. I'm not going to teach tw uh, talk to you too much about like techniques right now because I don't want to overload you with too much information. It's probably already an, a lot happening. Uh, I'll talk to you that in, in, in the next round. Um, but all I want you to do is try not to move your body. And the, the thing is, if you have an itch or you have a numb bum or something, it's okay. Move around and then, get, then program yourself. Okay, now I'm going to get deeper. And when I say deeper, it's you're not, you're not being present in the room. You're not being in your mind. You're being, you'll get to a space where you feel like your timelessness, you know, your weightlessness, you don't feel like you're even your body, you don't feel like you're even in your body. And it's not that you're out of body as such, there's a part of you that's... The empty space. Yeah, I, I describe it as this like dark void, like it's not nothing dark as in like evil, it's like this blackness. It's the point at which your brain stops body chattering. Yeah. <laughs> you still and you go quiet. The monkey mind has been quiet, yeah. Exactly, and you, yeah, you have no thoughts, you, you have no sense of your body awareness, and it just feels like just your personality in this, in this bubble, and that's what you want to achieve. So these tools that you're, with the headphones, you're blocking out any physical uh, auditorial noises, the eye mask, get, get rid of anything physical that's visually disturbing you, and relaxation with your clothes, everything that's physically, so you're relaxing all the senses. Hopefully there's no smells that are disturbing you from the room, that's why Keeping the door shut from the kitchen outwards um, doesn't disturb any smells that should happen from the kitchen. Um, but yeah, it's really close enough your five visual senses to open up the sixth, basically. And uh, yeah, so the next session, well, the first session that we do uh, shortly, before you do that, um, not, not yet. If you need to go and change, do that shortly. When I say, come back come in here and then we can all make a start all together. So please take off your watch, please don't have any you know, electrical items on you, just have you, when you come in here, bring your, bring your notepad, notepad and pen and uh, yeah, we'll make a short start, Lee. But um, yeah, I don't want to overload you too much information for techniques as there, there are tons, there are so many techniques people can do to gain the out-body experiences, more deeper dreams. But right now, I just want you to familiarize yourself with the processes. Now, if some of you, are, if you are full from the, the food, from lunch, then most likely you're going to be a bit full, so you want to be upright a bit. So just prop yourself up in the bed, and uh, that's fine too, you know, okay? Um, I've checked all the audio. It should work. If at any point that you're only hearing uh, music in one ear, please let me know. Uh, but before you do that, just make sure that the headphone jack is plugged in here properly as well as in your headphones that sometimes happens and just connect just make sure that you know your headphones are working properly all right um try and come back in the checkpoint room when i say so people often have experiences where they've uh i've had a dream and they've heard me tell them to come back here and then within two minutes of session they've come in and they've already had an experience and they're like oh where is everybody oh there's been two minutes they're still in their session so it happens quite a lot but that's okay because a lot of phenomena does happen here with these sessions all right if this is new to you if you get the spooks easily please relax because everything's positive and you know happy here we've never had any bad experiences and yeah. It does happen, yeah. I did one retreat where uh, a lady, she slept through every single session. 
Um, and I'm saying this to you because if this happens, please don't beat yourself up in your mind like, oh, I fell asleep again. Please don't be upset, all right? Because it does happen to people and it will happen to you at some point. And that's all right. You've come here to relax. Perhaps you've been working very hard and you're stressed out and you need that rest. And, pardon? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, try and um, just relax with that. Don't beat yourself up because, you know, in your mind, because every meditation session is completely different. One, uh, one lady who came here, the last one I did, she got such an amazing thing. She's like, wow, I'm really excited for the next one. And I was like, great, have that excitement, but don't have the expectation that the same thing might happen again. Next round, she didn't have anything. She's like, I didn't get anything. I was like, yeah, but don't be upset that nothing happened. And then the third round, she's like, ah, oh, an experience. So it's like a, like a sandwich. She'll have an experience and she didn't and she did. And the thing, same thing might happen to you. If you use this practice and um, able to be more deeper in meditation, etc., most likely you'll have, continue having snowball experiences. If it's new to you, maybe you're lucky and things, it's, it's just random, it's spontaneous, which is really good. So any questions so far? No? Making one understood? Yeah. Cool. So yeah, you, you're going to love the sessions. It's, so it's set out exactly the same way every time. It's just the music is different, the tones is different. And during the weekend, they'll get shorter and shorter, the intro stuff. So it's not me blabbering on about, I'll oh, get relaxed. That, might, that won't be in there. So, okay, so we're going to make a start on the first one. Um, go to your room, go to the toilet if you need to. Uh, get dressed, uh, change if you need to do that. And then come straight back here and make a first session in the first one. All right. Just a notepad. Just have it with you the whole time because you'll probably want to make notes or... And when you use the notepad, when you're, when you're up and awake, keep it with you because it's important to write down experiences, which I'll say later from dreams, because you'll be walking around, oh, I remember that. So it's important to write things down, just bullet point things. You don't have to write an essay, <laughs> 5,000 words or something. No, no, no. Just like bullet point stuff. You know, if you had a, if this was a dream right now, ladder and retreat, you don't have to write the whole thing, just put ladder and retreat. It would jog your memory. Yeah. So that's why it's good to have a notepad with you. It's a really good memory like, uh, activator. So, <coughs> all right.